right. Hey, Scrappers, it's Tom from the iScrap app. Today is Wednesday, February 10th, I think, 2024, 2021. Hope that everyone is doing well, staying busy, staying healthy, and of course, scrapping often. We love seeing you tuning in every Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. We like to do our live episodes on Facebook, which we post to YouTube afterwards, and we have our podcast where we post that there as well. If you're looking for more information on Scrap, please become a Patreon supporter. For 26 cents a day, you will get extra tips and tricks on what's going on with the market. I'll give you a little teaser. Early this morning, we let everyone know that copper was at, you know, eight or nine year highs, which was a nice little thing to be able to know if you've been saving, if you're looking for extra knowledge, if you're starting your own scrapping business, if you're a full-time scrapper with a part-time job or a part-time scrapper with a full-time job, these little tips and tricks are really nice to know about because they help you make more money. That's what our goal is, to help you make more money, learn about the scrap market, learn about what's going on, and then if you give us questions, we always want to be able to answer those. Over the last seven days, we've been watching these markets and hey, I mean, when you have anything topping out at all-time highs, as long as it's not your credit card bill, you're probably going to be in good shape. So with copper hitting uh, all-time high, excuse me, eight-year highs, we're really, really excited to see the market recovering, strengthening, and staying solid overall. These markets have continued to stay strong. We have a lot of question marks that have not been answered. When's the stimulus going to happen? How's the stimulus going to happen? How much is it going to do? What's it going to encapsulate? How's that going to affect the commodities market? You know, behind me, you see an array of different prices that are posted. And these prices have been increasing over the last few days, but of course we did see that big decrease in the steel market a few weeks ago after the large run-up that we saw. And that's why we always promote, listen, we like nice, small, steady increases. We don't like these jolts that go all over the map. Those are the things that scare people, whether it's investors, traders, scrapyards, brokers, scrappers. Change is never a great thing. So by not having change, it gives you the ability to really know what's going on with the market, it gives you a stability. And that's why Patreon, becoming a Patreon supporter will help you do that in a little better way, shape, or form. Don't forget, if you have the iScrap app, you can also download the app to your iPhone, to your Droid. You'll be able to post uh, prices on there. You'll get news alerts. You'll get some other text message alerts with uh, things that Patreon supporters would have already received either the day or morning before. And it looks like we have a couple of questions that I would love to get to right now. Yep. Uh, Dion asked, should I sell over a thousand AC units as is or break down for better value? Too much processing working alone. Yeah, Dion, it's a great question and it's one that I'm going to answer without giving you an answer, okay? If your AC units have Freon or oil inside, then you probably need to get them properly drained and uh, evacuated of those gases. Of course, you've already had them drained and they've already been sitting in your yard clean. So if they are clean, by all means separate them. Why? You make four to five times the amount of money. If you sell to your scrapyard right now, let's say they give you a little above what our national light iron price is, around seven or eight cents a pound. So if you have a thousand window units at 30 pounds a piece, that's 30,000 pounds, seven cents a pound, you're walking away with $2,100. Rough math based off of my history, 30,000 pounds of AC units, you're going to pull about 4,000 pounds of ACRs out of there. And let's stop at that point. ACR average across the country, $1.20 per pound, $4,000, $1.20, gives you $4,800, not including the other 25,000 pounds of steel, motors, copper, or sealed units that's going to be inside. So if you want to look at a rate of return, you're going to make, I don't know, two to five times the amount of money stripping those things down. And if they're already in your way, then just organize them and have them in your way in a completely different way. These are one of the items that we love seeing scrappers take them apart. But one piece of advice we do give after, of course, the Freon's evacuated and the oil is drained, we suggest saving a bunch of them and doing them in one shot. This way you're using similar tools, 
similar process, similar procedures, and helps you make more money with your scrap. More questions? Bring them on. Russell asks, is copper going to keep going up? Russell, my crystal ball is still slightly cracked, fractured, bent, and bruised. If I was to bet on copper going up, I would have lost because there's zero chance that I saw the markets doing this this year. When I started to see the steel prices receding a few weeks ago, I was expecting copper to drop back down. You know, trading prices and scrap prices are different, and that's why iScrap exists. Because when people look at copper prices online, if you look today, you'd see three dollars and seventy-seven cents. Well, that doesn't mean your scrapyard's paying you three seventy-seven. Let alone are they getting 377? These are trading prices. It's like an oil price, $61 per barrel today. Well, if you take that and divide it by 55 gallons and you figure out the price, well, wait a sec, the price for, for gas in a barrel should be $1.20 and you're paying $2.40. Where's the difference? So that math always really confuses people sometimes. So where the copper prices are going is going to really be reliant on a lot of the stimulus money, on a lot of the infrastructure changes, on the EV uh, output of cars growing. I mean, I saw an article the other day, General Motors said that by 2025, they're going to have 25 vehicles that are going to be powered by electric. So that means that they're going to need more copper for their electric motors, more copper for charging stations. But this is also what they say on paper. Let's see them do it. Let's see the stimulus put in. Let's see things happening. And one thing that I'll say that not a lot of people are talking about in the scrap industry, when you just print five or six trillion dollars like the United States did, excluding what the rest of the world did, prices are going to naturally go up. Now, you might think that your cost of living hasn't changed, but it's actually been diluted. So some of these prices, while they are higher, they should be higher. There's more money in the world floating around. It needs to, to funnel somewhere. It needs to have a channel. So we look at these prices, and yes, it's great to be able to look at them, but when you compare them to five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we're in a very funny time period right now where, it, in my opinion, there's a bubble that's just getting blown up bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm scared to see a 08 market crash, which is what many people that I read and listen to are talking about happening. It might not be in 2021, but it could be coming in the following years because when you build up a debt level like we have right now, at some point, that bubble is going to pop. Another question. We have a question from Jason. He asked about what's going on with aluminum. Should it be going up or down? Jason, another great question. Aluminum prices, heck, we haven't even got to them yet. They are really roaring. We've seen the aluminum prices climb in the last quarter of 2020, climbing in the first couple of weeks of January. A bit of a decline going into the end of January and the beginning of February, but we've seen them rip roaring right back with those markets for higher grade aluminums like your 6063s, your rims, your EC wires, which is a clean aluminum, aluminum wire with no steel inside, which would be an ASCR. All of these markets have been climbing and the best part of that, drum roll please, the tariffs are still in place. So if the tariffs get released, you could see those prices jumping up another 10 to 15%. But with the way things are going, don't forget, my crystal ball is slightly cracked, foggy, and bruised right now. So if they go down, you don't get to hold me to it because a lot of these things are calculated opinions based on articles, news, scrapyard owner, you know, learning things from traders and different things that we move at our local scrapyard. So we try to, to feed this information to you in a way that no one else does to help you, again, make more money with your scrap. Now, while we're on the topic of aluminum, we have recently partnered up with an aluminum can company that, uh, excuse me, an aluminum can firm, uh, not firm, uh, manufacturers. Uh, uh, excuse me, the Aluminum Cans Manufacturing Institute, which represents a whole group of aluminum can manufacturers, and they're going to help create more content for us to teach you about where you can sell your cans, different prices that you can receive, and in return, we're going to give them different areas where they can have different scrappers sell their cans to make more money and keep that recycling process flowing. One of the coolest facts 
facts that I think that I've ever read in the recycling industry is that from the day that a can gets dropped off, 30 to 60 days later, it is back on the shelf repurposed as another aluminum can. You know, maybe it went from a soda to a beer or a beer to a soda, regardless, 30 to 60 days, you have a turnover like that. Think about it. How many things do you know that can be recycled that quickly and back on the shelf? I mean, maybe cardboard, but right now there's such a, an oversupply of cardboard that those cardboard prices per ton are way down. And while we're on the subject, cardboard used to be worth 150 bucks a ton, if not more. Now we've seen OCC going down to $20, $30, $40 a ton, a penny or two per pound, where garbage companies and municipalities used to make money on recycling the cardboard from their residents. Now it's either break even or costing them money, increasing the local property taxes because now they need to pay to get rid of things. So we see this crazy cycle going on in the cardboard industry. Plastics, on the other hand, Again, it's very tough to be able to learn about. We've talked about it before and we'll talk about it in the future. Now the copper prices with them being so high, there's a couple of things that you need to watch out for. Is your local scrapyard reacting fast enough? If the markets are climbing 20 cents per pound in three days, why don't your scrap prices go up 20 cents per pound? And these are a couple of things that we're going to start to explain in some of the podcasts that we have coming out. We're going to explain how a scrapyard owner thinks, how a scrapyard owner sells and how that affects you, the scrapper, and your prices that you receive. You know, we've had people talking about the scrappers banding together and not selling their material. And on paper, that's a great idea. But I have friends that are holding millions of pounds of copper and they will negate millions of scrappers just by that material they have sitting in their yards. So in some of the podcasts that we're going to have coming out, we're going to talk about what a scrapyard owner sees and how that affects you, the scrapper. Now with steel and iron prices down about 50 or $60 per ton, we did see a small increase over the last week of seven to $12 per ton of an uptick across the markets as a whole. Now with oil prices increasing, like I mentioned a little while ago, it's $62 per barrel. Transportation costs are going to go up. Fuel costs are going to go up, which could affect the scrap prices. We still have those tariffs on for the steel. There's a lot of question marks where we're only three weeks into a new administration. So many things have been unanswered. So many things have been unchallenged. There are so many question marks that we need to wait and see what's going to happen. But overall, we feel that the scrap steel industry and market for the rest of 2021, as most of the other scrap has, will remain strong and steady moving forward. Now, something that we don't talk about often is stainless steel, and today I do want to talk about it. Stainless steel, of course, has two primary grades that you're going to be interested in, 304 and 316. Now, 316 is worth more money, and it is not something that you're going to see in your everyday life. It's more of a medical grade stainless, couldn't be involved in certain food industries. 304 stainless is your everyday stainless, utensils, the outside of refrigerators, stainless steel grills, that would be a good example. And those prices were really, really depressed with scrapyards paying between 15 and 25 cents for 304 stainless for a very long period of time, most of 2020. Now here we are a month and a half into 2021 and with the uh, the day of love Valentine's Day just around the corner we are loving some of these nickel prices as those prices have increased with a national stainless 304 average in the 38 to 42 cent range 17 cent increase which is about a 65 percent increase overall. Those are ace numbers. I think that they're going to be going up higher. So if you're holding stainless, you might want to hold off for a little longer as we do see the big ability of that market increasing. Now, overall, these scrap prices have been strong. If anyone is going to sit here and comment negatively, post about, oh, I want the prices to go higher, please go, uh, go cry a river to someone else. When you have a run-up of a copper price that went from $2.15 trading on March 17th of 2020 to $3.77 in less than 11 months, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of I don't want to hear it from you. Markets are high. Steel prices are up. Aluminum has essentially doubled over that time. Gold prices are over $1,800 per ounce. But wait, there's more. We haven't talked about catalytic converters.
right? So the team over at rrcats.com is quoting your catalytic converters, serial numbers, and pictures. Going to help teach you and educate you how to make more money with your catalytic converters. You can always text the team through rrcats.com, learning about your prices, where we've seen rhodium up over $21,000 an ounce again. Platinum price had about a 4% increase today, over $1,200 an ounce. And the palladium price has also remained steady over that time. So we're looking at these numbers and they're really, really strong with the national price average for catalytic converters creeping to 165 to 195 per cat. Of course, there's lower and of course, there's higher. That's why I say averages. So if you have cats, rrcats.com will be able to quote you on them. Now, scrappers, don't forget, become a Patreon supporter. You'll get more tips every single day. And then there's going to be different levels that we're going to have coming out in the upcoming months where you'll get additional market tips, videos, and the opportunity to interview and ask me questions one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's via Zoom or phone call, to help you learn more about the scrap markets and help me learn more about what you're looking from the team at iScrap to help you make more money with your scrap. We hope that you all have a very happy Valentine's Day in a few days. We hope you continue to stay healthy, stay busy, scrap off, and until next week, scrappers, I'll scrap you later.